Hey, it's Panzer Coons here, and in this video I want to review the P-40 Warhawk, or the Tomahawk as I called it uh, growing up. And I think a lot of people who start playing this game, this is one of the first aircraft, it's iconic from World War II, uh, you know, that they want to get. Growing up, I, I remember going to the ice cream truck, getting those little foam airplanes, and I wanted it, the one with the shark face on it, and it was just so cool. But I think some people may be disappointed when they get to it in this game because Everything from tier 1 to 4 is basically a turn fighter. And then when you get to this one, you're like, alright, I finally got it. And it doesn't turn. And if you turn on stuff, you're just going to get killed. So I think it's a little, it's a little uh, you know, underrated in that sense. But what the plane is, it's a, it's a high scale cap aircraft because you have to take what the enemy gives you. You can't just come into a contested airfield and shoot stuff down, use your damage, use your guns, because you don't have good guns and you don't have good maneuverability you kind of have to really be smart about what you're doing. And I think people that just want to play the game, have fun, shoot stuff down, they end up not liking it for that reason. We're looking at the guns. 228 damage, which is decent. Only 500 range, but they are machine guns. So you, you don't do well in a lot of head-to-heads or even taking out like bombers. But the one thing that it can do is it can set stuff on fire. So that has gotten me out of trouble sometimes, but you can't rely on it, but it does happen sometimes. Survivability, you have 250 hit points, 45 resistance to damage, and 60 resistance to fire. Those are all good numbers. Uh, pretty much it's the highest hit points in a tech tree, a tier 5 light fighter. So it's pretty rugged, and if you need to, if you need a ram, you can definitely come out on top, which you'll see in one of the clips. And it's airspeed. It's not the absolute best, but you that's definitely something you always need to use. You always need to be keep your speed up. And if you look at the BF-109E, which is its nemesis, I can go about 20 kilometers faster. And this, this is set up for a speed build as well. So you do have a slight edge on speed. And maneuverability, it's just painfully average. You can't really use it unless you're up against like a heavy or a multi-roll. But even then, you got to watch out because you don't want to slow down too much because anything can just come in behind you. And then you're SOL. There's no way for you to escape. And lastly, the altitude. You operate at a... 16 to 1600 to 3600 you're pretty much can use that freely only the the bf 109 and looks like the mic 3 can kind of operate in that range so you have to use your speed and altitude offensively and defensively so if a player makes a mistake you have to capitalize it i mean capitalize on it but you can't you can't just go into uh you know contested places or where this you're outnumbered and come out on top because you just can't turn so I'll pull up a few clips where I show uh, using some boom and zoom tactics. I'll show where you, when you come across aircraft that perform better than you, like this BF 109E, it, it does almost everything better than I do. But if you play it smart and play to the strengths of this aircraft, you can come out on top. And after that, we'll give it a final score on the Kunzer scale. So I mentioned about the guns, the only saving grace being that they do get you some fires more, more than 20s. So that is true. And I also talk about the BF-109E being the biggest rival to the P-40. So there are, way, there are ways to deal with aircraft that you know can outperform you and are very close to you. So the, the BF-109E can outturn me. It can outgun me. Our altitude is about the same. Or it's a little better for the, for the BF-109. And I know I can outspeed the BF-109E by a little bit. So coming down from, from up top, showing this, I make an attack on the on MiG-3 as you can see he's almost at full health I don't get all of him but I'm able to set him on fire and that was able to finish off what I couldn't get you see I come in I come in and make an attack he's out turning me but because I set him on fire that is one little extra special thing that I can do in this aircraft so before reading this at one point I'm going to come across a BF-109E and sometimes I, it's kind of hard for me when I'm recording battles or trying to record stuff for my videos because I have to walk the line of trying to win the game or just trying to have something good for a video. But being that we were pretty much ahead and that I had a, another really good player in my team, I decided this is a perfect opportunity to show what you can do to a specialized BF 109E right in front of you. So I know he can outturn me. I know he can outgun me. I know our altitude, his is a little bit better, and I know I can get away. So my thinking is, I'm going to go straight at him, sneak up on him from behind, 
And once he turns, I'm going to activate my, my uh, pneumatic control assist so I can turn better. But if I see that he's turning with me, I still have the speed to escape. So let's see how this unfolds here. I'm thinking I'm going to make a sneak attack, but he's very smart and he, he sees me coming. So he turns to meet me. And I'm keeping straight to make him think that I'm not aware. But I know I can't go head on. I know I can't go away. So I was prepared for this. So I activate the, the consumable to turn. And I get into, I make a hard bank to the left. And I dive. I use the rudder. And I start turning on him. I'm size, I'm basically, I'm sizing him up here. And from those couple turns, I realize there's no way I'm ever going to get close to it. He, he most likely has a full speed build. I mean, I'm sorry. He has a full turn build. Because I couldn't even get half a turn on him so right away i know i'm not going to win a turn fight what is my next thing speed so i wait until i'm pointing down and he's pointing up and then i'm going to hit the speed boost here and i'm just going to get away because that's the best thing i can do so you see when i was facing down that's when i chose to escape and when he's facing up he has to come around all the way back and chase me and I don't know if you noticed, but when I was in this area, I sent a heavy on him. So whenever you have someone, you're going up against someone, always send a bot on them. Because as you'll see, it pays dividends later. So I'm able to dodge. I'm going so fast. I'm going pretty much at my top speed. And without taking that much damage, look at that. I'm already out of his range. So I was able to size him up, see what my opponent was doing, and I'm able to escape to use this aircraft's att attributes correctly. And now, what I'm used to is he's just chasing me all across the battlefield. That's what a lot of people do. But he was smart. He broke off because he knows he's not going to catch me. So now, I want to turn back and hope that he's distracted, hope something else happens. And sure enough, the bot that I sent on him is attacking him. So now I know he's distracted or he has to deal with something else. So I'm coming in and I'm hoping that he doesn't turn to me. Even, even if he turns to me at this point, I'll take that chance because he's low on HP and I have more. I can probably come out on top. But because he's focused on his bullfighter, he doesn't see me now. And I'm able, to, I'm able to come in and take him out right there. So that is how you deal with aircraft that perform better than you. Find the one thing that you do better and have contingency plans to get away. Always have a plan to get away. And that was perfect because I had a lot of time to set up. I had a lot of space. And I had a lot of time to think. Normally, you don't get that much time to think. But I didn't turn with him. I escaped. I sent a bot on him. And then I distracted. And uh, with this aircraft, you, ha you have to take what the enemy gives you. You can't be the alpha, the alpha in this aircraft because you don't have the firepower or the turn. So it's a high skill cap aircraft. You have to really uh, take what the enemy gives you. And he gave me his side. He gave me his, uh, his self not paying attention. And I'm able to come out on top in that engagement. So this, this move here that I'm going to do is just the classic boom and zoom tactic. I'm coming, I see this, uh, this light fighter coming straight at me. So I don't know what it is yet. But I see that it's an enemy player. So as I mentioned, whenever you're... you're going to dogfight with someone, always send a bot on them, just, just as a habit. You never know how, when that bot can come in and help you. But I don't know who it is yet, and then I see it's a player. I send a bot, and I'm sizing him up, and I see he's just coming straight at me. But at the last second, I decide not to go head to head. And the reason I did this, even though he's a tier lower, I just didn't want to take damage, and I didn't want to be set on fire. When we're on an even playing field. Like if he sets me on fire here. Then I'm at a disadvantage when I come around. So I kind of dodge him a little bit here. And I climb. Because I know I have, I have a better engine. I have a better climb rate. I have a better everything. And I probably even have better guns. Because he's a tier lower. So I climb. And now whatever happens. I'm in. I have the advantage. If he sets me on fire. If he crits my wing or my tail. All I have to do is dive to get away. There's nothing, there's no way he can catch me. If we were on, on the level field, he can turn and possibly catch me, right? But since I'm on top, I have the advantage, so that's where I want to be. I always want to put myself in the advantage. So he's coming up, 
I'm coming down and I take him out but he's able to set me on fire and I actually ramped him so let's say I didn't kill him there and I'm on fire I would have still been able to get away so that is the classic boom and zoom tactic you meet someone climb and dive on them so this is one thing that should always be in your arsenal when you're in the p40 so another thing to think about whenever you kill someone just remember what they were let's say if you're in a battle and uh the the enemy players they're in a multi-role and then everything else is like fighters or heavies right so you should have it in your head the enemy that i just killed is a multi-role because more often than not when they respawn they're gonna go right back to you so i had just killed that p36 right and i don't mean to pick on him but these are just good examples to show what you can do in my head i'm thinking if i ever see see these little arrows on the side of the screen it tells you what's around you so always be looking at those and i see there's a heavy fighter in i mean a light fighter inbound sure enough it's the guy i just killed he's coming right at me so if i didn't if i don't pay attention to these little these little arrows he enemies can easily come in and just take you out because you're doing something else but i recognize that i want to take this guy out and I recognize that I'm being chased. So what do I do? I climb. And I want to meet him. I, where I have the advantage again, right? But I know I'm not going to be able to fully... Um, I'm not going to be able to fully turn on him. But I want to put him in a situation where I'm facing down and he's facing up. So I can escape. So I, I make a loop. And check it out. He's facing up, right? He's following me. I'm facing down. So this is the time to get away. Put the boost on. I get away, and even the Yak is chasing me, but he has no chance. These guys have no chance to get me, but the principle remains the same. I'm able to fully get away, and I call a bot on him. No matter what, as a rule of thumb, just call a bot. And now I want to climb and see what he's going to do. He doesn't do much, so I'm just going to ignore him and do something else. But I see that he's, he's really dead set on, on getting me here. And that's fine. I let him chase me. And then that bot that I sent on him, or actually an, a player, a player gets him. He's distracted. So now it's time to strike. He's not paying attention. I come in on him now. And look at that. You're able to take him out. So put yourself in the best situations, especially in an in a aircraft like the P-40. Don't get in a turn fight. Don't go where you know there's a bunch of enemies. If you kill someone... Keep have it in your mind that they're going to come right back at you. And that's why you, you'll be prepared. You can escape. And when you escape, put a bot on them. And then attack when they're least likely to expect you. So here we are with the P-40 Warhawk at the Kunster scale rating. And the first thing is the altitude. I gave it a 5 out of 5. And in my book, it's right up there with the MiG-3, the BF-409E. All those will get a 5 for me. And also, you can really use the altitude in battle. You can get up there to that height and then come down and, and attack. It's not it's like uh, some other aircraft where they have a ceiling, but you can never really get there. Theoretically, you can, but it's not really usable. But in this aircraft, it is. Especially at Tier 5, a lot of things are, are operating at lower altitude, so you can really use that to your advantage. Secondly, speed. As you saw on the hangar, it's 20 kilometers faster than the BF-109E, so you're pretty much, pretty much the fastest Tier 5 light fighter out there. And you could really use that to get away from your opponents or close the distance uh, when you need to make an attack. Thirdly, the firepower. I had to give it a 2 because the 109, the Spitfire, the Zero, all those just have better guns than you do. And you can't really use the guns in a, in a way to be super aggressive. You kind of have to be smart with it. You kind of have to be you know hit and run. So it definitely gets a 2 for me. And lastly, the turning or maneuverability. If this was based just on horizontal turning, then I would definitely give this a 2 because pretty much every other tier 5 life fighter can turn better than you. But because you could take it into the vertical, you have a very good engine, you have a very good rate of climb. So instead of going horizontal, you just take it to the vertical and you could, could outclimb people and use that to your advantage. So if we add all the scores up, we get a 15 and under the Kunzer scale that falls under the Das Gut category. And I do think this plane is, is pretty good. Uh, 
it does have that high skill cap, how I mentioned before. But if you put yourself in the right situations, uh, it's it, it makes it all the more rewarding for me knowing that I'm finding a plane that's a little undergunned, not the best turning, but I have two of four things and that's all I need. Give me two two of any of these four ratings uh, out of five and I could try to make it work. So that's my review of the P40 Warhawk and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.